All right, normally when there's like a table or a chart or a graph, I recommend that you kind of just use that to start and just test whether something is accurate. The answer choices are accurate based on that, right? Don't read the text, just be like, okay, is the line going up or down? Like all that kind of stuff based on the choices. But these choices are also kind of long. So I think at this point, I'm just, I just I need to know as much as possible going into the choices so that I can sort through something here. There's a lot to sort through. So um, they're looking for the, the choice that best describes data uh, and that supports Barrett and Rayfield's suggestion. So let's, let's start with the passage. What does this say? The largest tyrannosaurids, the family of carnivorous dinosaurs that includes these things, um, are thought to have the strongest bites of any land animals. Determining the bite force of extinct animals can be difficult. So it can be difficult, Oop, highlight that, difficult. However, in paleontologists, these people have suggested that an estimate of dinosaur bite force may be significantly influenced by the methodology used in generating the estimate. Okay, so let's, let's see here. We need to support that. A, the study by Mears used body mass scaling. Okay, let's do A here. Mears is body mass scaling. Mears, okay, that checks out. And produced the lowest estimated maximum bite force. Well, no, these are the these are the biggest numbers, so that's just wrong. So that, that part is just wrong. It's factually wrong based on the data. So this is the kind of thing I was talking about at the beginning where like it, I don't need to understand what the data is supposed to tell me. It's just this choice is, is just incorrectly interpreting it, right? Big numbers are more force. So yeah, this is just wrong. In their study, these two people used tooth bone interaction analysis. So these people used tooth bone interaction. Yeah, that seems right. Uh, to produce an estimated bite force range with a minimum of 8,000 newtons and a maximum of 34,000. So that seems right. Now, maybe this is the answer, but remember what we were talking about here. The, the thing is supposed to be influenced by the methodology. This is not conveying that idea. In fact, the fact you know, that we have four different people mentioned in, these, in this chart suggests that we're probably going to need to compare and say, okay, this person used this method and got this result. This other person used a different method and got a different result. So choice B is only about one, um, one study. I guess it's not one person, but it's one group of people. So that's no good. I, I, it could be right, but I, I'm not looking, it's not looking good to me. Let's look at C. The bite force estimates produced by Bates and Falkingham and by cost were similar to each other. So cost is here, Bates and Falkingham is here. Yeah, 35 to 63 and 35 to 57, similar, similar enough, that seems okay. Uh, while the estimates produced by these other people each differed substantially, so yep, yeah, that's true. Now, why would that matter? Is that have to do with the methodology? Well, yeah, these two used a similar method, so maybe that's why they have a similar result. This seems to bring in the idea of methodology. It's kind of me doing a lot of work to, to make that connection, which I don't love, but it's, it's also true. And it does do this comparative thing that B does not. So this, this seems maybe better. Let's look at D. The estimated uh, maximum bite force produced by cost exceeded that produced by Bates. Okay, so let's see if that's true. So cost is here again, and Bates is here. So that's true, yeah, 63 is bigger than 57, even though both groups of researchers use the same method. Okay, so C and D are definitely both the top contenders because they're comparing things. C is gonna end up being the right answer, and the reason is that D actually doesn't support what they're saying. The, they're trying to say that the methodology is what influences your result. So if we have the same methodology, then we would expect to have a similar result. But D is saying the opposite, that these two people, even though they did the same thing, still got different numbers. That's not really what the point of the passage is. This is, this is tricky, but notice kind of when I'm able to like sort through the choices and, and kind of break them down, I'm really just continuing to strip away as much information as possible. I start with the names, I don't like to pronounce the names, and then I get down to like, okay, is it just about numbers being higher or lower? And in this case, the real difference is these ones are saying uh, cost and Bates are the same. And this is saying cost and Bates are, uh, where to go here, uh, different, right? So which one fits more with what they're saying in the lines? Well, uh, they are saying the estimate may be significantly influenced by the methodology so if they have the same methodology but get different results, then that is undermining, weakening 
the conclusion in the passage? This is a tricky question. This is a lot of stuff to sort through. So especially if you're someone who runs out of time, you have to make these kinds of judgments about like how deep you're going to go. And honestly, if you picked C or D here, I think you did a lot of good work. And it might be frustrating if you pick D, but you're probably still along the right track. So don't get too mad at yourself. With time, you'll get better and better at kind of finding those wedges that I do that kind of let you compare choices more easily.